So just to move on to the next topic for this recap, identify. Shapira, me, and Kayla. Red one? A orta. In purple? Coronary trunk. Okay? And what I had said earlier was the two main veins of the neck are what? And the left and right internal jugular vein, all three words. It merges with these two veins, which are the subclavians, and where they merge is behind the posterior sternoclavicular joint, and they become the left and the right brachiocephalic vein. Which one is longer? The left one, because it has to go from the left side to the right side to get to the SVC, the superior vena cava. All right, so let's move on to um, this next anatomy. There's a landmark muscle here called the anterior scalene. And because it's shown nicely on one of our models, um, you can see this anatomy. The subclavian vein is kind of in front of it. And the subclavian artery is posterior to this muscle where it attaches the anterior scalene. So look for that when they get down. as a landmark. <clears throat> Be able to identify the muscle. The function of the muscle I don't care about. It, it's, it attaches to the first rib. But I just want you to use it so you can locate those two arteries. So all right, so the artery is posterior to it. Posterior. So clavian vein. That's the anatomy there. There's a torso back there. It's the 3D model. Let me zoom in just a little. If I'm pointing to the muscle, and it's the anterior scaling, obviously the one is red, so it's the artery, right? It's a clavian artery. There's a clavian vein in front of it. So that is shown on some of our models there. Okay, well, let's move on from that. Here's another model of the torso that shows the great vessels of the heart. And, um, you know, it doesn't show the anterior scaling well, but it's, you can study it to identify the great vessels of the heart. You can see the heart there, and we're, we're, we're going to dissect the sheep heart on um, Monday. And to, to remove the heart from the chest cavity, uh, I inserted this picture here. Here's the heart removed from the chest cavity. And um, you'll, you'll, this is basically what you get in the lab. Okay. It's removed from this pericardial space. And to do that, you don't have to do it. We're not marching the sheep in here, right? I mean, you just have to receive the heart from, you get it from the slaughterhouse. And uh, what you would have to cut, you should at least know, you would have to cut both of these, superior and inferior vena cava. You would have to cut aorta, pulmonary trunk, and all four of what? Pulmonary veins. That's pretty much it. You should be able to remove it from the, para from the pericardial space. And basically, that's diaphragm below. You can see that the uh, fibrous pericardium is attached to it down there. When you get the heart, you have to study the surfaces, okay? Basically, can you tell the front from the back? Because if you can't, you're kind of sunk, right? And it happens a lot. Things aren't labeled for you, and you have to figure it out, and I'm here to help you with that. So the first thing you want to do when you get your heart, they're fresh, they're not preserved. So it may be a little bloody. If there's a lot of blood, uh, rinse it off with the sink. Take it to your uh, lab group to figure out what, what's the anterior surface. Because sometimes what happens is, you think the back is the front, and you spend 
the first 20 minutes of your dissection, try to identify things on the back when you think it's the front. So obviously that doesn't work. Everything you identify is incorrect. And um, so basically, um, look at your, turn to the person next to you, and don't let that be us. It's okay if it happens, but let me straighten you out. So how do you tell the front from the back? Um, okay, here's the anterior surface. And what I like to do is, students think, oh, I, I can only study the heart models in the lab, but the pictures in your book are a very close approximation. So I made it a point to take a picture of the model that matches the picture in the book, so you can kind of like have confidence. And um, let me turn the lights off. One way to tell the front is to identify this fatty groove here called the anterior interventricular sulcus. It's one thing to look for. Let me write it down. <clears throat> Interior surface. Interior inner ventricular sulcus. A sulcus is a depression or a groove. It's filled with fat and coronary vessels. All the sulci, sulci are with fat coronary vessels, and you have to know which ones, I'll tell you later. That's a good landmark to find. Once you find it, well, one thing, you know you're looking at the anterior surface, <clears throat> and it's in between the two ventricles, interventricular. It's the name of the the partition that divides LV and RV is called the interventricular septum. So it's basically like the sulcus is like on top of that septum. All right, good. So you're trying to figure out the front from the back. You find this, and then you say to yourself, if that's with the anterior interventricular sulcus, which chamber is that? RV is correct. So on the other side, it would be LV. You're off and running. Um, the other thing to look for, do you see the two oracles, the dumbo ears? Remember, oracle means ears. If they're kind of in the same plane, like they are here, you're looking at the anterior surface. So look for, right? as well as the left articles. And you also see the apex of the heart on this side here. That's the apex, like behind it will be the base. Um, all right, that's all I want you to see. I think identify those couple of things and you can kind of see it there. Well, let me note the other thing. When you get a heart, the thing you see the most that's a blood vessel is this one. The pulmonary trunk is most prominent on the front side, the anterior surface. And also try to find the ligamentum arteriosum, the connection between the pulmonary trunk and aorta. Here's a picture of the other heart we have in the lab. It's the smaller heart. It's the one that's labeled 40A. 40A means nothing. It's how they used to inventory our models here before I came. But we still call it 40A, but it looks like that. Here's a picture of a student, and they found that it's the best ligamentum arteriosum I've seen. So if you get one that looks like that, come and get me. I'm going to take another picture. It's a little blurry. 
connection between pulmonary trunk and aorta. There's pulmonary trunk, there is aorta. See that? That's an oracle, uh, part of the atria. The oracle is the atrium. It's the part that looks like an ear. But here's the back of the heart. Okay. So the, the posterior aspect you see primarily the atria. Sometimes people refer to this as the, the base of the heart. I just call it the posterior aspect. You just see the atria, the right one and the left one. Which one's this, the right or the left? This is the right one, correct, because that's the left one. Okay. Now this model, they show the windpipe and the food tube, the esophagus and the trachea with it. Okay. They're not responsible for that for this test, but they are shown that on that line. Um, on the model, turn the lights off so we can see just a little better. I see four red orifices, and the arrows are pointed inwards like that. So what are these four things? Pulmonary veins. And why did they use the color red? Oxygen blood is correct. Okay. Well, let's move on. Here's the other posterior aspect of our other heart model. And here's the uh, third surface, the inferior surface, or sometimes it's called the, the di diaphragmatic surface because it's the part that's lying on top of the diaphragm. So think of this as an in inferior view. This basically is the interior view. So we see the, the atria kind of superiorly, and then we see the ventricles down here. Um, you know, it's kind of hard to see. Let me see better here with the coronary vessels. And this kind of straight up and down sulcus, that's the posterior interventricular sulcus. Go with that. Again, filled with fat and coronary vessels. And from this view, you can kind of see a sulcus between the atria and the ventricles. It kind of goes around 360 like that. And this is called the coronary sulcus, this big blue vessel lying inside of it. So no coronary sulcus. <clears throat> All these sulci, right here, here's you know, all the heart, we have four chambers. Um, we draw Valentine's heart. It's a shape you're familiar with. The heart really isn't shaped like that, though, is it? Um, so I said before, you have the anterior interventric interventricular sulcus going down the front, but you know, it connects with this one in the back. So I'll draw it as a solid line, I guess, in the front. And then there's that one in the back I'll draw as a dotted line. And they connect at the apex of the heart. So it kind of goes front to back, anterior, posterior, and ventricular sulcus. And the coronary sulcus, I mean, you can see it on the back there, and it comes around the front. And it goes all the way around between the atria and the ventricles. So these kind of like go all the way around. 
Um, okay, this one here. Note the coronary sinus, number 34 on this model. Coronary sinus, it's a vein. It's, it's the one that I said earlier is draining the deoxygenated blood from the myocardium back to RA, right atrium. <coughs> coronary sulcus. The coronary sinus lies in the coronary sulcus. Number 34, right? Yeah. Just remind coronary sinus lies in the coronary sulcus. <clears throat> Put a star next to this one. For your dissection, it's hard to locate. And what I have you do is, um, when I come around and I check, I, I, I want you to be able to stick a metal probe and probe this thing from the inside. So usually you have the, uh, you can go in through the right atrium, you can stick a metal probe and you can kind of like snake it in there. Okay, now I want to see your probe on the inside of that thing. And it's the hardest thing to do, and I usually have to help you, that's okay, you won't lose credit. But that's why I have you started, it's difficult. Yeah. And uh, you, need, you need assistance there, but if you kind of like mentally prepare, you can do it. All right, so here is um, the small heart. And, you know, on both of our hearts, that's just the hole for the stand. Don't try to identify it. Identify. Hole for the stand. Don't get confused. Now, I want, I want you to know you can take it off the stand, too. That helps study the surface to remove it from the stand. Okay, well, the internal features, I'm going to turn the lights off since we're trying to look at a picture of the model here. I kind of already went through all of this, okay, when I did the app. So I, I don't, don't necessarily have any new notes for you, but let's just kind of note the thing we noted before. On a dissection, you have to cut it open. On the model, you just open it. How convenient is that? If I see a comb-like appearance of the inside of the atria, call it pectinate, pectinate muscle. That's what I'm going for. If this is the right atrium, what is that blue vessel up there? Superior vena cava. On the picture, there's the pectinate muscle on the other side. On the model here, um, I see a little blue thing. That should be the orifice of coronary sinus. Okay. Uh, on this picture here, I, I see clearly a depression. That's the fossil valve. It's over here too. It's not clear to me what it is, but. I see all these labels, it's one of those. You can look for it there. So that's the internal appearance of the right atrium. Here's the uh, internal appearance of the right ventricle. Um, so this is the right oracle, that's the right ventricle opened up. And you can see it here on the picture. Okay, if this is the right ventricle, what is this valve and that valve? The tricuspid. Okay, very good. Or you can say right AV valve. If I ask you to identify the roughened appearance of the ventricle, the um, trabeculae carnae, okay. and the other one I gave you, the heart strings that attach the valve to the papillary muscle is the chordae tendine. Okay. The very tough strings in lab, you see, you try to pluck them. Okay. They're very tough. When it funnels up towards this area, called the conus arteriosus, What's the name of that valve? Pul pulmonary semilunar valve. You're allowed to just call it pulmonary valve. That's, that's an exceptional term. Uh, anyways, name that great vessel. Pulmonary trunk over here in purple on this picture there. They have a dissected open, so you can see the three cusps of the pulmonary valve. Okay. Now, when, you ha when I have you show this to me on a fresh heart, they don't, they're not prominent like that. They're very wispy, they're very thin, and they're reddish. And it's like they collapse, and you have to take a, a probe, and you have to like pull them out. You know, you, you'll see that. This is the right side. Here's the left side. Okay, in the model, again, it's, it's on the stand, and it's it, like it was, like it would be in the chest. 
And here's a picture of it. It just looks like exactly the same thing. So identify that chamber in the heart. Left atrium, left ventricle, identify valve. The bicuspid. See these strings? Those are the coronary tendony, and then you also see the um, trabeculate heart in, right? So some things there. If you look inside on this model, I see two red holes. What do you think those are for? Pulmonary veins on that side. Okay. And I even see the part that's open to comb-like muscle. Peritoneum. Okay. Um, here's the interventricular septum. Remember, this is the left side. All right. Here, here's basically one on the other side. So identify valve. The bicuspid. Identify. Pectinate, what about down here? Trabeculate cardae, very good. What about the connection between this and that? What's this? Ligamentum? Arterioles. So, so those of you who are still kind of catching up, you have plenty of time. Um, so that, that's kind of the heart. Um, I, I want to spend some time talking about the aorta because I kind of glossed over it earlier. There are different parts of the aorta that I didn't teach prior. You know. The ascending aorta, the aorta garge, the ascending or thoracic aorta. But this is the main artery. Basically, this is the different parts of the aorta. The aorta is receiving blood from the left atrium, from the left ventricle. receives blood from the left ventricle. The first part coming off the heart is the ascending aorta. It's about the first two and a half centimeters rising off the heart. <clears throat> and at about the level of T4 vertebra, the name changes to aortic arch. The aortic arch is an arch, so it begins at the level of T4 and it ends at the level of T4. Begins, ends. kind of what's being illustrated there. Then the name changes again as it descends. It's called the descending aorta or thoracic aorta because it's in the thoracic cavity. Descending or thoracic aorta. That basically picks it up at the level of T4. It's going to go all the way down through the diaphragm and become the abdominal aorta, but I'll teach that later. Just basically from T4 to T12, that, that kind of is the length of the descending or thoracic aorta. And from T4 to T12. So it's a long vessel. And along the way, the, the aorta gives off branches to supply blood to different things. That, um, so to show you this picture here, the ascending aorta, the first branches that come off are arteries that supply blood to the heart. They're called the coronary arteries. The right one and the left one, there's two. It's the first one off. So think of those as branches of the ascending aorta. So the main branches you gotta know. By the way, I should say that arteries branch, veins do not. 
Um, think of like a tree. When a tree trunk grows like a little sapling, it gives off branches. I guess that's the tree analogy here. So arteries branch. Okay. So it's like you have a big trunk and blood flows through the big arteries and it branches off into smaller ones. That may branch and branches off into smaller ones and it keeps branching. They get the capillaries. So arteries sometimes are called branches. So if you see a book called an artery a branch, don't get confused. Now, blood flow is in reverse for veins. You start at the smallest veins. And it merges with another one, and then you have a larger vein, and maybe that merges, and basically, so blood flow is in reverse. So they, they, they call the smaller veins tributaries. So I just don't want to confuse you when I use branch. I use branch veins. Don't call veins branches. That's wrong. Just so you know. All right, so wait, the branches of the ascending aorta are the right and the left coronary arteries. Let's see if I have a picture of something. Hold on a second. One thing I want to say is that uh, coronary means crown because if you just look at the coronary vessels and isolate them, it looks like a crown. That's where the name comes from, anyways. The next part of the aorta is the aortic arch, and the three branches you have to know are right here one, two, three. From right to left is the brachiospelic trunk, the left common carotid, and the left subclavian arteries. Clavian artery. Know those three. So which one is this again? The brachiocephalic trunk. It's the first one coming off. And um, so there's some differences between the right and the left side here. On the left side, you have 
left common carotid, left subclavian, those are direct branches off the aortic arch. But on the right side, you have one brachiocephalic trunk, which then branches into the right subclavian and the right common carotid. Again, the reason is, is the artery on more on the left or more on the right? The artery is more on the left. So if it has to send vessels to the right side, it has to like send this trunk first, and then that branches into these two. On the left side, you're already there. So you just go straight into these two vessels. Okay, that's why there's that difference. Um, okay, and I'll, another point of confusion, didn't you have veins that were also called brachiocephalic? Yeah. So don't confuse them. Okay. It is confusing because they're, they're like the same name. All right, the third part, well, the descending or thoracic aorta, you can see it posteriorly here. When they removed this, see how they cut these paired vessels? We're in the thoracic region. What else do you have that's paired? Ribs. Ribs. And so these are the arteries that fill the intercostal spaces. These are paired posterior intercostal arteries, branching off this one. Paired posterior intercostal arteries. So note that. All of them. All 12. Yeah. Yeah. They all, they all need it. They all need the blood supply. So they. I've seen this on cadavers too. It really does look like that. Like perfectly aligned and oriented. Really cool. Here's a picture of the, the thoracic aorta. And I, I indicate the T4 to T12. And that's why I said it begins and ends. It's useful to use the vertebra as kind of like general landmarks for a person. Uh, okay, now I mentioned the coronary arteries on the first one. Those coronary arteries have veins that run with them, and um, they have some branches there. Now, coronary means crown. It refers to the arteries. You don't call them coronary veins. I think they're mostly called cardiac veins. But anyways, these are, this is the blood supply to the heart muscle, so we need to talk about it in this chapter. This slide, I just have an outline. The names of the arteries and the names of the veins that you're responsible for. The right coronary artery has two branches. There's more than two. There's way more than two. These are the main two. <laughs> marginal artery, uh, sometimes called the right marginal artery, but I dropped the right. Marginal artery, posterior intermetricular artery. Okay, in the parentheses I tell you basically what part of the heart they supply. Um, the left coronary artery, the two main branches are the circumflex and anterior intermetricular arteries. Okay, so know those. And a little memory jogger, MP and CA. Uh, think your politics ide ideology. If you're conservative on the right, you're militant, like military police. And if you're more liberal, democratic, maybe you live in the state of California. And that little thing that has helped me to this day to remember the four branches of those two coronary arteries, the marginal, posterior, and ventricular, and these two. The coronary veins. Great, small, middle, and the coronary sinus, those are the four you have to know. And if you study a picture of the heart like this one, they're not too hard to spot. Ascending aorta, right? And the first branches coming up are the right and the left coronary arteries. Now the left one coming up is very short. Okay, let's call that number one. Because it immediately branches. And when it branches, the name changes. So it's, it's a short artery that branches. One goes down, 
the anterior interventricular receptor. Call number two. That is the anterior interventricular artery. circles, you'll see it called um, the left anterior descending. Also called, I want to write this on the board, the, the widow maker. The heart attack, this one clogs, causes a massive heart attack, and it can lead to death making it a lot of widows, so this has that reputation. Uh, okay, so that's one branch. Now, the other branch coming off, wrapping around in the coronary, coronary sulcus, goes posterior, but that is going to be the circumflex branch. Uh, remember, you can call arteries branches. I'll just put that, since that's what they call it here. Well, it starts where at the branch point. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we'll call that circumflex branch. You can call it the circumflex artery. You, you won't miss it. It's an artery. And uh, yeah, okay, th those are the two branches on the left side. So the right coronary artery is much longer. I think it was a little longer like that. We'll call it four. That's the right coronary artery. Now the right coronary artery gives off two branches. One remains on the right margin of the heart. Right there. Call it number five. Right, I'll put right in parentheses. Marginal artery. You don't have to put right marginal artery. If you drop it, I won't deduct points. But I think there's a left marginal artery that I typically don't teach, so don't, don't worry about the left one. Worry about this one. Okay. Now the right coronary artery is going to go on back here, behind the heart. It's going to give a branch that goes down the posterior interventricular sulcus. So let, let's go to the posterior view here. <clears throat> well, before I leave this view, right coronary artery, it's longer. Longer, longer than what? The one on the left. See the one on the left? Do -do 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 -do. Stop, and then branch it, and then done. Right, here's the widow maker. Right, here's the circumflex branch going around. Here's the right one, longer and longer, 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 longer. Gives a branch here on this margin of the heart. What is it? The marginal artery. So you can go around back. You got this view. So you're going to pick it up. RCA, right? Right coronary artery and gives a branch, boom, down here. Um, it's called posterior interventricular artery or branch, if you want to call it. Number six. Posterior interventricular artery. Now the veins that are important to identify, the first one I'll mention is the biggest one that all the cardiac veins are draining into, coronary sinus. So note that. So I guess on this picture, on our heart, it would be like on this side. Coronary sinus. See it there, 
there from the posterior view. If I go back to the front view, we can see the other veins I want you to know. So here's the front view. Running with the right marginal artery is the small cardiac vein. They run together. So I'll just kind of draw a blue line next to number five. Instead of giving it a different number, I'll just write it next to number five. Small cardiac vein. And the, the vein running with left anterior descending is the great cardiac vein. And next to number two. And the one running with the one on the back side there, the posterior intracular artery, go ahead and call it middle cardiac vein. It's in the middle of this one. Yeah. So those are the veins you're responsible for. Of course, there are many more. You just know those. Good. Okay. That's a repeat slides again. Great vessels, and I already taught these. I'll just skip right over them. And um, let's see here. There's one more picture of the heart that's commonly shown. It's this one. You basically kind of chop the top off the heart, and you look at it. And you, you can see all four heart valves on this slide. Um, so I have them identified because it's a picture I use a lot. And it kind of gets us ready for the next lecture, which is the cardiac cycle. Aortic, actually, aortic semilunar valve, pulmonary semilunar valve. This is the front. Okay. So that's the pulmonary aortic valves. Here is the tricuspid and the bicuspid. And um, I do have this on the, um, on the app. Let me see if I can cue that up real quick. Turn the lights off so you get a better view. So let me, let me kind of orient. So basically, this is like anatomical position. Identify a chamber of the heart. The RV. Here's my landmark, the interventricular septum. So what's that? So we're just going to look down on here. So we're turn it around that way. And there you go. So you see that's how they generate the, the picture. So identify that valve. Pulmonary SL valve, aortic semilunar valve. So what's this one going to be? The tri and the bicuspid. Very good. Um, I think we'll just pick it up here next time. I can stop here. Now, um, stop this.